Hi, have you heard the term psychometrics or psychometrician and are wondering what it means? Or perhaps you're a little familiar with uh, what psychometrics is about uh, and wondering why it's so important, why it's so critical to certain fields. Or perhaps you're suing accreditation and want to know why you need a psychometrician. Well, I'm Nathan Thompson. I'm CEO of Assessment Systems and I'm a psychometrician and I'm here to talk about that today. So first of all, what is psychometrics? Uh, psychometrics is the scientific study of how we assess latent mental constructs. So there's two key pieces of this definition. One is latent mental constructs. So that means we're assessing things that you can't see. They're latent. Um, they're mental. Um, it doesn't have to just be uh, intelligence or personality. Some people think psychometrics is only those two things, but no, it's um, could be anything. It could be knowledge of fifth grade math. It could be whether you're a good brain surgeon. There are so many things uh, that are involved with uh, assessing different types of mental constructs. And the sec second thing about it, which is the first part of that sentence, is that it is the study of how we assess. So it's not the study of these things itself. We're not studying personality. We're not studying intelligence necessarily. Psychometrics is the study of the process of assessment. How do we build a good assessment? How do we ensure that it's valid and reliable, which I'll talk about? Um, and how do we use it appropriately and fairly? So why do we need psychometrics? Well, there's three goals. Uh, there's reliability, validity, and fairness. Uh, reliability means that the numbers that are being produced are reliable and we can trust them, they're consistent. Uh, validity means that we have documentation or evidence to support that the scores we're producing are uh, making meaningful inferences uh, and that we have uh, evidence about those inferences. So if we say this assessment is going to make sure that we hire people who are good workers, we need to have some documentation that's actually the case. And then third is that the assessments are going to be fair, that they're not biased against some minority or just not plain useful at all. And there's a fourth one there that happens sometimes, that is accreditation. Accreditation refers to the process of putting a stamp of approval on some organization or some program, uh, such as a certification exam. And there are strict standards that go into getting something accredited. And if the thing that's being accredited involves an exam, there's usually some standards around psychometrics that say, hey, you have to do this and this and this as part of the psychometrics. So why psychometrics? Well, test scores at a fundamental uh, goal of testing is to make decisions. That's why we have tests. They can be really small, minute decisions, or they can be really big, important decisions. Um, and they might be for an individual person, or they might be in the aggregate, like to evaluate if a new teaching method is working for an entire country. Um, so this can be just about anything that could be mentally measured, like I mentioned before. You could have fifth grade math progress. We could be looking at university admissions. We could be looking at uh, pre-employment screening tests or HR ass training assessments. And we could be looking at professional certification and licensure. Uh, as psychometrics is the study of assessment through all of these things and more. Psychometrics tries to make these decisions more accurate and fair, like I mentioned. So we've all come across confusing questions in our life. Psychometrics tries to head those off of the pass and make sure they don't make it to the final version of the exam. Um, and there's so many other things that we try to do too, besides just preventing confusing questions. We don't want to be too hard, too easy, to be off grade. Um, we, um, we want to make sure that they're on the right topic. Uh, and in some cases, even if you've got two test versions that are both of perfect questions, one might be a little more difficult than the other. What do we do about that to ensure that scores are still fair? So going back to these things here, um, actually improving these is a, a service to society and a service to all of the stakeholders in these types of assessments. So if we can improve the assessment of fifth grade math progress, that's going to help us um, help each individual student learn more effectively by giving them the next learning module, but it also might be making an impact at an aggregate level, such as uh, trying to develop better ways of teaching fifth grade math across the entire country. Um, university admissions, the goal there is to ensure that the university accepts uh, students that are most likely to succeed. And uh, pre-employment screening is similar in that we want to hire people that are very likely to succeed. And professional certification and license testing uh, means that we want to build exams that ensure people who enter a profession are adequately prepared and knowledgeable and uh, not going to hurt people. They're going to be able to do their job effectively. 
Uh, we don't want doctors or nurses that are not qualified because then people literally might die. Uh, so having good assessments to make sure that those people are adequately prepared and knowledgeable is very, very important. So how does psychometrics actually go about improving these decisions by improving the assessments? Uh, the most important part of it is making sure that assessments go through this assessment life cycle. Um, and there's different stages here, and it can be differed based upon what type of assessment you're doing. Uh, but the general approach remains the same, regardless of whether you're doing like certification versus education versus higher ed uh, versus pre-employment. First thing you want to do is define what the test is going, going to measure, because validity, again, we want to make sure that the test is measuring what it's supposed to do. So we want to at first define what the test is supposed to do. Then we want to define what the test is supposed to cover. This might be looking at a K-12 curriculum or it might be doing something like a job analysis. Then we take that curriculum and job analysis, turn it into test specifications or blueprint, which specifically says what the test is supposed to cover. And then we can ensure that uh, different versions of the test cover the same thing. Uh, then we go through item writing, which is making sure that uh, items are written uh, effectively. And then we review those items and edit them, make sure that they follow formatting guidelines, as well as other things like perhaps Bloom's taxonomy levels. Sometimes we go ahead and do a pilot or beta test uh, as we take the assessment and deliver it to a small group of people, analyze the statistics, make sure that nobody got all the items wrong or something like that. Um, then we do that uh, statistical analysis more deeply after we get some uh, real data. Um, and then we're going to potentially flag items for being too hard, too easy, too confusing, having two correct answers and other different things that we want to look at. Um, once we got our pool ready, we can assemble final versions of the test forms and publish them. Um, if you have uh, cut scores on the exam, such as a pass fail or a basic proficient advanced level, uh, we have to set those. You can't just do that willy nilly by picking a round number like 70. You have to do some uh, research and quantitative analysis that goes into those. Uh, then you can uh, publish your test and deliver them live. And after you got the live data back, then you probably want to do some statistical analysis again. Uh, often that is step 11 here, uh, equating or scaling, which is to ensure that if you got different versions of the test, that they're equitable and fair. And then finally, you can report the scores. Uh, so you can see there's a lot more here than just writing some questions, giving the test, and then reporting the scores. Uh, the, the higher stakes of the exam, the more work that goes into it, and the more that psychometrics is needed to ensure that the test is reliable, valid, and fair. Uh, another aspect of this validity is uh, predictive validity. We want to make sure that the uh, test is being used in a way that's appropriate. So just because a test is good for high school graduation doesn't be, it means it should be used for university admissions or vice versa. Um, there's uh, A test should be used what it should be used for. Uh, one of my graduate school professors like to say the right tool for the right job. You don't use a screwdriver to pound in a nail, you use a hammer for it, even though you could use some screwdrivers if they're heavy enough to pound in a nail. Now you want real data about this. So you want to make sure that if you've got admissions test, that it is actually predicting university GPA or graduation rates. Or if you're doing pre-employment tests, you want to make sure that it's actually predicting job performance ratings by supervisors or measuring tenure, that's, you know, that's how long somebody stays successfully at a company. It depends on what you define as the dependent variable or success here that you want to correlate to the test scores. But that's you can see how that's an important aspect of validity. Another thing that psychometricians do is build software to support all of this. Um, so we build software platforms to drive um, job analysis, to drive the item writing and review process, to store metadata about items, to publish tests, to analyze the statistics. Uh, there's a lot of different things that go into uh, managing this process, especially when there's a lot of people involved. This is an enterprise process, just like when you're um, you know, building uh, courses at a university. There's a lot that goes into it. It's not just one person doing it. Uh, you need a big enterprise software platform to manage learning across the university. The same thing is true for large scale assessment. So uh, if you're interested in psychometrics and want to implement it to improve the decisions that uh, your organization is making, whether it's making better hires, whether it's uh, measuring students better in your country, whether it's accepting students better into your university, there's a lot of work that you can do. Um, we're here to help provide resources for that. You can see other videos on this channel, or you can go download some of our free software. I'll put uh, links in the notes. Um, but you can also uh, go and take online courses or become a psychometrician yourself. 
So if you wanted to do that uh, to become a psychometrician, uh, there's a blog post that I'll mention on my in the notes here as well that I wrote that lists some of the graduate programs that are out there. There's also uh, the NCME website, which lists a lot of the programs across the world. Um, most are in person, but a couple are uh, online if you want to take them online if you're in a, a place that doesn't have its own uh, graduate programs, because uh, there are really not that many of them, and most are in Europe or North America. So with that, thank you. That's a, a quick introduction to psychometrics. We'll be filling out a lot more of these videos on those specific topics, like standard setting or item analysis. But this is uh, the first introduction into why we need psychometrics and why it is so critical, because it provides real evidence that our assessments are serving the purpose that they're intended to serve, whether it's hiring good people, uh, assessing students on fifth grade math, or ensuring that we have the best students at our university. Thank you.